Merry Christmas, everybody. We sincerely hope that you had an amazing Christmas and we are excited to spend some time with you this morning. We would love to know who is joining us and where you're watching from. So say hey in the chat section and check in with your Lifehouse family on this Christmas morning. And we want to say a very special welcome to those of you who might be joining us for the first time. We want to be the first to say welcome home. We know that finding a church home can be a little intimidating, especially if you just moved to the Hampton Roads area or you haven't been to church in quite a while. If it is your first time joining Lifehouse today, we would love to connect with you and send you a gift card as a small way to say thank you for joining us. You should see a link to our digital connection card in the chat box or whatever platform you're watching on. Please go to that link sometimes before the service ends today and fill that out. We promise we won't try to sell you anything or bombard you with information. We just want to say thank you for joining us today. But regardless of how you found us, we pray that the service is a blessing to you. Before we dive into today's Christmas message, we want to remind you of the vision of Lifehouse. Lifehouse exists to invite everybody, I mean everybody, to live an oncoming life by following Jesus, being a disciple, doing life together, being in community, getting in the game, being equipped to serve, and leaving a legacy, being a steward. And speaking of leaving a legacy, we are nearing the end of our legacy offering initiative, and Pastor John wants to give you a quick update. Lifehouse family, Pastor John here, giving you a quick legacy offering update. Uh, we are at about uh, close to $20,000 right now. So I just want to thank each and every one of you who have prayed and obeyed and given. We're so grateful for that. And uh, you can give until December 31st. We've got a good amount of time uh, to hit our goal, which our goal is $50,000. So if the Lord lays on your heart to give, you got until December 31st to give. I thank each and every one of you who have prayed and obeyed. And for those of you who have not done so yet, I'm praying for you as you pray and obey. Just whatever the Lord tells you to give, give it. And I believe that as we all do that, we're going to see this goal met. We're trying to plant seeds in 2022 so we can see a harvest in 2023. If you want to get more information uh, about the Legacy Offering, you can go to our YouTube page and you can watch the Legacy Offering video there. So once again, thank you so much for praying and obeying and giving. So we can see in 2022 so we can see a harvest in 2023 and see hundreds of people experience the uncommon life that Jesus wants to give them. If you would like to give today or invest in helping all people experience the uncommon life that Jesus offers and give towards the legacy offering, you can go to givetolifehouse.com or you can see the ways to give in the chat section of whatever platform you're watching. But let's get into today's message. Pastor John has a special Christmas message for us today. Let's dive in. Well, Merry Christmas, Lifehouse. So glad that you are joining us today. My name is John. I'm the lead pastor here at Lifehouse. If this is your first time joining us, just so glad you're joining us on Christmas Day, celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus. And I just wanted to jump on real quick and just share a quick message with you. And I would just love, though, if you would check in really quick, if you have not done so yet, just check in in the chat section and just say hey and say hi to your Lifehouse family, but just really felt led to jump on here this Christmas day and just share with you a quick Christmas message that I just want to talk to you quickly about gifts. You know, probably today you received some gifts and if you would in the chat section, I would love to hear what your favorite gift was that you received, but just felt led to talk a little bit about gifts. And as I'm thinking about gifts, I'm thinking about uh, the wise men and how what we see within the Christmas story, especially Matthew chapter two, Matthew points out that these magi, these wise men, they came and they brought gifts to Jesus of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> myrrh. <laughs> um, and we actually see this, Matthew chapter 2. This is what it says, On coming to the house, they, and they being the wise men, saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men brought gifts to Jesus. And I was, as I was reading this, as I was reading this this Christmas season, I just really felt that there was a few things that we can learn on this Christmas day about what it means to give gifts, not, not just get gifts from Jesus, but maybe give gifts to him. And this word gift is actually used a lot in scripture. It's actually used 140. 53 times. And we actually see the, the Bible talking about how God is an extravagant gift giver. We actually hear how um, salvation is a gift, right? How we see in Ephesians chapter two, verse number 
8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is actually a gift from God. Can you type gift in the chat section? Gift from God, that life is a gift given from God. We actually see that the Holy Spirit in Scripture is declared to actually be a gift that God lavishes on us, that God gives to us. We can see that one of the things that that is also said about salvation being a gift, it says uh, in Romans 3.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. One of the things James points out in chapter 1, verse number 17, he says, All good and perfect gifts come from the Father of lights. Scripture also says, ministry leaders in Ephesians chapter 4, that God gives those as a gift to the church. This is such a small snippet of the gifts that God lavishly, freely gives to us. And I'm so thankful when we experience the byproduct and the benefit of these gifts that God gives us every day. But have we ever thought about not just about what the gifts God gives us, but what gifts we are called to give to him? I mean, have you ever thought about what does Jesus want for Christmas? Like, what, does, what would Jesus want most as a present from you? And I really don't think this is a shocking answer. You probably already conceptually know this. But the best gift, the best present you can give to God, that you can give to Jesus, is you. Is you. All of you not just a piece of you or a part of you, all of you. When Jesus was talking about what it, what it actually means to love him, he says, love the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. What, what he was saying is he doesn't want a piece of us, a seventh of us, a tenth of us. He wants all of us. And whenever we're thinking about this Christmas season, not just what we get gifts from people or gifts we get from God, but maybe what we can give to God and what God wants most is you. The best gift you can give to him is you. I heard this quote. It says, your life is a gift from God. How you live it is your gift back to him. I want to say that one more time. Your life is a gift from God and how you live it is your gift back to him. The truth is, I think we all struggle with this We don't struggle with this conceptually, but we struggle with this practically because I believe there are some areas and places of our lives, all of us, including me, we can struggle to give to God as a gift. And we almost, you know, we we almost give him and just hear me out. We we almost give him the gift card version of ourselves, right? Because here's the thing, right? Whenever... (laughs) Some of y'all are going to laugh at this, right? But you can know somebody did not have a lot of time to get you a gift when they get you a gift card, right? I'm not against gift cards. I love gift cards because that puts the power in your hands to kind of get what you want. So not that giving a gift card is bad, but sometimes, um, let's just be honest, we've all done it. We ain't got a lot of time. ain't got a lot of money. So we're going to let you know we're thinking about you a little bit and we're going to get you a gift card. Right. (laughs) But, uh, you know, it's it's funny because gift giving is this like art. Right. You can tell when somebody puts a lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of investment and maybe even a lot of money into a certain gift. Like you, you can tell this gift was thought out, that it is thorough, that it was sacrificial. Right. Like we as people can know and can tell when somebody has done that. And then sometimes we can tell when somebody is, is, you know, they were thinking about you, so they got you something. You know, and, and it's like, not that any of those are bad, but I think we can tell when something is sacrificial, something is thorough, something is really thought out and thoughtful, and maybe when it's not. And what we actually see in the Bible is God's people, Israel, they, they were called to give sacrifices daily. You can actually see in the in the Old Testament, especially the first five books of the Bible, God lays out almost this sacrificial list of rituals for them to do. Now, here's the thing. God didn't lay those out for them because God needed something. God didn't lay those out because he needed their sacrifice. The truth was Israel needed the sacrifices so they could be reminded of the God who gives good gifts to them. So God said, hey, these sacrifices are going to be a way for you to help remind you of where your source is from. 
of who your source is from, of, of, of who actually provides for you. And God would actually call them to give their best. He, he would say, don't, don't give me what isn't a sacrifice. Give me something that is sacrificial. Why? Because it, he knew it wasn't just enough for them to conceptually say, you're number one, you're our God. But he said, no, I need you to actually show it and actually give your best gift, your best sacrifice. Why? Because then that will help you know who you're giving the best sacrifice to. And that is the most important thing and the provider of your life. And, but the thing is, right, Israel got in one season of their existence, got into this habit of giving God what wasn't their best. And God actually calls them out, Malachi chapter one. And this is what he says, right? This is not the most Christmassy stuff. So just hang in there with me, but we're, we're going somewhere with it. God says this, when you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? Would you sacrifice lame or diseased animals? Is that not wrong? Try offering that to your governor. <laughs> Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? Then he says, as cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. Like, God is like, you're not giving me your best. Like, what you're doing is you're giving me an animal you're going to end up killing anyway. Like, you're... You're trying to give me diseased animals. <laughs> and God's like, how can I accept that when I am the source and provider of anything even healthy you have? And I don't think God was saying this out of some, you know, narcissistic way. He was, he was saying, if, if you aren't practically giving me what is best, I won't be number one. I won't be best in your life because the way you show it is you, you give your best. And, but that's what I think sometimes we can, we, can treat, we can treat God. We don't want to give God our best gifts. We give him our leftovers. We give him something to, to appease instead of what is our best. And as we're thinking about this, this Christmas season and the gifts you have received, like I said, I want to challenge you to say, what gift are you giving back to him today? And the best gift you can give him is you, but not just a part of you, not just the lame, diseased version of you giving him your mind, your heart, your soul. You're giving him you today, your best, all of you, 100%. And I just want to give you a couple thoughts, like three, three reasons why I think this is wise, right? It says the wise men gave gifts. And I think any wise follower of Jesus, any wise Christian wants to give God their best. I just want to give you three thoughts really, really quick why this is important. Number one, it's his anyway. Like anything God asked you for, and you, like you as a total person, like when God asks you for it and you give it back to him, you're just giving back what's his anyway. It's crazy how we can have this mindset of what we're giving back to him, we, are, we're, we actually own, right? I don't, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say brag on my kids, but I, no, this is not bragging. This, this is like, I'm going to tell you about my kids. Like how annoying is it parents whenever you buy your kids something, food, whatever, and then you ask them for a bite or a sip. And they get this look on their face like they have the money to pay for that. They have this look on their face like I, I am going to, when they don't, they're 10 years old, they ain't got a job, they ain't got no money. They can't pay for that taco salad. They can't pay for that taco. They can't pay for that pizza. They can't pay for even that drink. And when you ask them just to give a little bit back of what you have provided for them, they get this look on their face like, who are you to ask me for that? How does that make you feel, parents? Or even not, you know, just parents, but just whether you are a boss. You know, it's, it's like when you provide something and when you provide something, you ask for a little bit and it's like people are like, Right? And I think this is somehow we can get with God. God is the provider. He's the one that gives us every breath. You say, well, I built this. You didn't provide the breath you have. Well, I built this. I pulled myself up from my own bootstraps. Okay, you didn't put your life into existence. And, and, and that's the way I think sometimes we can get is that we can sometimes miss the fact that when we give God us, we're just giving it back to the one who made us and created us and knows us and loves us. We're just giving back what's already his anyway. It's his anyway. But we can get this mentality of I'm in charge. And that's, that's one of the reasons why God set in place in the Old Testament rituals, practices to help remind them 
They are not the provider. They are not that great. They are actually being provided for. And as you, and he was saying, as you give me your best, you prove and you show to me that I am number one. And that's the way it works for us, family. When, when, when we give God all of ourselves, not just the lame disease part of us, we show the world who's number one, who's the real gift. I love what 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says. This is Paul. He says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Can you type, you are not your own? I know that's a long slogan, but you are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. He's saying, don't forget you're not your own. And since you're not your own, since you were given your body, given your life anyway, you were, bought, like, you were far from God. He sent his son. He sent his best gift to buy you back, to redeem you. You are not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, honor, give back your life to God. Why do we give God the best gift of us? Because it's his anyway. He gave it to us. The second thought is this. God doesn't ask you to do what he doesn't do himself. I, that's what I love about God. That's what I love about the God of the Bible. It's not a do as I say. It's do as I do. God does not ask us to do something that he does not do himself. God is a giver. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. Can you type gave in the chat section? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his best gift, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God just doesn't say, give to me, give to me. He says, do as I do, do as I have done. Give your best because I gave my best. That is the heart of God. He gave his best. We can sometimes, though, struggle with this. We can, as we all know, there can be parts of our lives that we don't want to give up. Jesus said something really interesting in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 25, that for the longest time, I had the hardest time understanding this. He said this, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. For the hardest time, I had a hard time understanding that because I'm like, so I'm going to give up my life, then I'll find it. But if I don't give it up, I'll lose it. And really what I feel like I've landed on as far as the meaning, basically saying if you hold on to the gift of yourself, it'll be a weight you can't handle. If, if you say, I'm the provider, I'm in charge. I, I am in charge of my own existence. That will be a weight you are not meant to bear and you are not meant to carry. And honestly, is a, one of the biggest reasons why in our culture right now, I think so many people are falling apart is because they are trying to hold the weight of their own existence in their own hands. They're trying to be a creator instead of submitting themselves to the creator and realizing they are created, but they're trying to take the weight of being creator. So they try to create their lives without the help of the creator, which then puts on them a weight that they can't bury. And then that weight becomes anxiety. That weight becomes depression. That weight becomes hopelessness. And that weight ultimately turns into why am I even here? What's my purpose? Purpose, instead of looking up to the creator and saying, tell me why I'm here. Show me, show me why I'm here. Do y'all see this? And why I think Jesus said, if you try to save your life, if you try to keep it, you'll lose it because you have a weight you can't bear. But then he says, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And when he say loses, I can just hear the word give. Whoever gives their life back to me will actually find it. Why? Because he's the creator anyway. And you're giving your life back to the one that made you and created you. And you'll actually be able to find it because you're going back to the one who gave it to you anyway. It's basically saying the gift I've been given, I give it back to the gift giver. I hope that brings clarity about, about the heart behind that verse and what Jesus was saying. I struggled with that for a long time. But now that I've lived a little bit of life, I can see that when I try to hold back this gift of life from the gift giver, the one that gave it to me, I will mess it up. It is a weight I was not meant to bury. But when I take this gift of life that God has given me and I give it back to the gift, to the gift giver, I find that it flourishes. I find that I find purpose. I find that I know what is right and wrong. I find that I know why I'm on this planet. I find that I can be stable in where I came from and where I'm going. It becomes a life that I don't try to create. It's a life that I am 
fit into the pocket of being the created under the rule of the creator and I can find that sweet spot. And that's what I believe that as we take the gift of life and we give it back to him, we give God what he wants for Christmas and that is us. We have this peace that surpasses all understanding. God doesn't ask you to do what he doesn't do himself. So as God is a giver, as we give back to him, he gives back to us in increasing measure. All right, third thought. If you don't give your life as a gift back to God, you'll use God to get the gifts you want. I want to read that one more time. If you don't give your life back to God as a gift, you'll use God to get the gifts you want. This can be a hard one because when we don't view God as the gift giver in our lives as giving back to him, then what we'll actually see God as is he is like the candy machine. He is like the genie. He is like the one that if we do the right things, rub the genie the right way, then he'll give us what we want. And we won't see him as Lord and Savior and provider. We will see him as the means to get what we want if we aren't careful. You will either view your life as a gift and give it back to the gift giver, or you will use the gift giver to keep on getting gifts. That, that, that is one of the, the hazards if we don't give ourselves back to God, is we'll, we will view him as a candy machine, a vending machine. And then whenever he doesn't give us what we want, we will curse him and damn him. And we will say, you didn't give me when we cease to realize anything we have is a gift from him already. It is that important family. Give yourself back to him, not only so you will find your life, but so you'll have an accurate view of God, or you will take God and create him in your image and use him and make him be what you want. And you will end up using him to get what you want. Y'all, it is that important. Give yourself back to God because this is the trajectory that our heart goes in if we're not careful. Our, our, our heart will turn into this, God exists for my glory and my purpose instead of us existing for God's glory and his purpose. Family, God wants you. The greatest gift you can give him this Christmas season is you. Why? It's his anyway. Why? Because God doesn't ask you to do anything he doesn't do himself. But also too, if you don't view yourself if you don't give your life back to God as a gift, you'll end up using God to get the gifts you want. This Christmas season, my heart is that you just won't notice the gifts you've received today or the gifts God gives you, but you will think about the gift and gifts you're giving him today. And my prayer is that you would give your life as a gift, either to him today or back to him today. Maybe a prayer you could pray this coming year. Maybe you could even write this prayer down as, as just something you put in your phone. Maybe you can even put it as a reminder to just put it in a place where it becomes a ding that reminds you and becomes a cue to live your life as a gift back to God. Because just like I said, the quote that we read earlier was your life is a gift from God. How you live it is your gift back to him. Maybe this could be your prayer today. God, thank you for all the gifts you've given me today. Help me live my life as a gift back to you. How would that switch your mindset today? How would that switch your mindset in 2023? That instead of viewing God as this, this person that just lavishes gifts on you and then you'll use him as a way to get more gifts, that you'll say, God, today I'm giving the gift of me back to you. Because I know that when I give it back to you, I find who I am originally created to be. Maybe today you need to give yourself, give the gift of you, to God today, not just the gifts you've received. Maybe today you need to give him. You need to be wise, just like the wise men and give him the gift and the gift of you today. Maybe you should just pray something like this. Maybe just say this right after me, right where you're watching from. Say, Jesus, today I give me, myself, back to you as a gift. Just, just pray that. You can pray, so, just God, I give my life to you as a gift. And I just believe that as you're praying that, something supernatural is happening in your heart today on this Christmas day. Something supernatural is happening. That the Lord is starting to turn your heart. He's starting to bring light in and helping you see 
this is going to be a better, the, your best year ever because it's going to be your best year spiritually. It's going to be your best year ever because it is going to be a year where you don't strive to get more gifts from God. You strive to give the gift of yourself back to him. If you prayed that or, or you prayed something like that, would you, would you just say yes in the comment section? Because here's the thing. I, I, I think when you make a decision, when you make, when you make a commitment to God, I believe the next best thing you can do is just let someone know. So maybe you can just write yes in the comment section, or maybe you're going to see a kind of like link there that you're going to be able to click to just to, that you're going to be able to click to let us know. Would you please do that? Why? Because we first off we would want to celebrate with you, but secondly we would also love to follow up with you and just give you a few tools and get a few people around you to help you, to remind you, to to be someone that can spur you on towards living your life as a gift back to God every single day. Lifehouse family, can you just right now put in the chat section, just kind of put some clapping hands or kind of just put thank you, Jesus, kind of just put some praise for all the people today that are declaring, I'm going to give my life in 2023 back to God as a gift because he is the one that gave the gift to me. Lifehouse fam, I'm going to challenge you not to sign off yet. We're going to go into a time of responding to God's word. We're going to sing the song, Good News. And maybe you've never heard this song, but this is just a song declaring Jesus is our good news. The good news is Jesus. That what we're celebrating on this Christmas day is the good news of great joy for all people that Jesus was born. Emmanuel, God with us is here. And that we can live life knowing we have received a gift. And as we give it back to him, we become who we are originally created to be. Don't sign off yet. Let's worship together, Lifehouse family. Find my line, it was written, hope in every sentence. He was good start to finish, yes he was. Words that usher his presence and tell of the glories of heaven. The earth that still shakes at the mansion. Yes, it does. I've got good news for the broken, for the hurting. He came for you. In your hoping, in your searching.
Thank you again for joining Lifehouse this Christmas morning. Before we sign off, a quick reminder, next Sunday is New Year's Day. Lifehouse will once again be online only at 9.30 a.m. right here at lifehouseonline.church. If there's any way we can love or serve you, or if you need to get in touch with us, shoot us a text message to 757-690-2401. Let me say that one more time. 757-690-2401. That is a church phone number, and we'd love to connect with you there. We love you, Lifehouse family. See you next week.